Good morning students. Today we will study the first chapter of science, green plants. In this chapter, we will study about different parts and functions of a leaf, how green plants produce food, how plants and animals are interdependent. Excited? So let's start with the reading portion. Chapter 1 Green Plants Children, we all know that all living things need energy to live. They get this energy from food that they eat. Humans and animals, they get their food from plants and other animals. But a green plant is unique. Why green plants are unique? Because they can make their own food through a process known as photosynthesis. Because they can make their own food, they are also known as producers. Green leaf is a site for photosynthesis. Because of this, it is also known as plant's kitchen. Chlorophyll is a substance that gives green color to leaves. Parts of a leaf. Leaves are of different shapes and sizes and have different parts. But there are some basic parts that are common in most leaves. Let's study different parts of a leaf. This broad flat part of a leaf which is green in color is called blade. The tip of a leaf is called apex. This middle line is known as midrib or main vein. It is made up of hollow tubes which carries minerals and water. These tiny tubes are known as side veins. They branch out from the midrib. This stalk is known as petiole. It joins a leaf to the stem of the plant. All living things breathe. Humans and animals use their nose to breathe. Plants also breathe. They breathe through tiny openings or pores present on the undersurface of leaves called stomata. Functions of a leaf. The main functions of a leaf are to produce food, exchange of gases through stomata, food storage. How green leaves produce food? Green leaves produce food by photosynthesis. Plants need three basic things to perform photosynthesis. First is water, second is sunlight, third is carbon dioxide. It is a type of a gas. The word photosynthesis can be separated to make two smaller words. Photo which means light, synthesis which means putting together. We know for photosynthesis plant requires three things. Water, sunlight and carbon dioxide. S sunlight is trapped by chlorophyll present in leaves. Plant get water from the soil. Roots absorbs the water for photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide is a gas which is present in atmosphere. Plants absorb carbon dioxide through stomata. Just now we have studied stomata are tiny opening present on leaves and helps to exchange the gases. Now, carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of sunlight produces 
glucose and oxygen. Glucose is used by plant as a source of energy, whereas oxygen is released into the atmosphere as a byproduct. As plants produces oxygen during photosynthesis, they are known as green lungs. Glucose is produced during photosynthesis. It is a source of energy for plants. Some of the glucose is used by plants for the growth and development, while extra glucose is stored in the form of starch in leaves, roots, fruits, flowers and seeds. Parts of a plant that can be eaten as food are roots, stems, leaves, seeds, fruits and flowers. All living things need oxygen to breathe and this oxygen is produced during photosynthesis. Plants and animals depend on each other for many things. This is known as interdependence. First thing is food. Food chain is a sequence which tells us who eats whom. Green plants or grass is eaten by deer as deer eats only plant and plant products they are known as herbivore a deer is eaten by a lion lion is known as carnivore because they eat the flesh of other animals when a lion dies is eaten by vulture as vulture eats the dead organism they are known as scavengers. Pollination Transfer of pollens from one flower to another flower is called pollination. Pollination helps in the growth of new plants. Bees, butterflies and wasps are known as pollinators because they help in pollination. Plants attract pollinators through sweet nectar, nice smell or fragrance, or by colorful flowers. Seed dispersal. Animals eat fruits. At times, seeds get stuck to their fur and are carried away and dispersed to a distant places. This is called seed dispersal. It also helps in the growth of new plants. As we have done with the reading portion, I will give you the explanation of the chapter on both. Children, we see different things around us and all things are classified into two groups, living and non-living. You all have studied about living and non-living in class 3. All living things need energy to live. We get this energy from food that we eat. Humans and animals get their food from plants and other animals. But green plants are unique. Why green plants are unique? Because they can make their own food by the process of photosynthesis as they are producing their own food. They are known as producer. So let us understand what is photosynthesis. Green plants or producers can make their own food through a process known as photosynthesis. See children, I have leaves of different plants. They all are different in shape size and structure but have same color. Have you ever wondered why most of the leaves are green in color? Let me tell you. The answer is chlorophyll. The green color of leaves comes from a substance called chlorophyll. 
Now we will study about different parts of a leaf. Broad, flat part of a leaf is known as blade. The tip of a leaf is called apex. The tube which runs at the center of a leaf is called midrib. It is made up of hollow tubes which carries water and minerals. Side veins. The veins which branch out from midribs are known as side veins. They also carry water and minerals. Petiole. Joins the leaf to the main stem. This part is called petiole. It is a long green color stalk which attach leaf to the main stem. This broad flat part of a leaf is called blade. Children, can you see this flat part? It is known as blade. Now, can you see this line which is running at the center? This line, this is known as midrib. It carries minerals and water. Now, observe the lines which are arising from the midribs. Can you see these side veins? They also carry water and minerals. See this long stalk? It is known as petiole. It helps a leaf to attach with the main stem. And the tip of a leaf is called apex. All living things breathe. Humans and animals breathe through the nose. Whereas Plants breathe through tiny opening or pores present in leaves called stomata. They are present on the surface of a leaf and looks like a tiny pore. The word photosynthesis can be separated to make two smaller words. Photo means light. Synthesis means to produce. Plants produce their food in the presence of sunlight. That's why the process is known as photosynthesis. Plant needs three basic things for photosynthesis. Water, sunlight and carbon dioxide. Plant absorbs water from roots. Plants get the light from sunlight. Who absorbs the sunlight? Chlorophyll present in leaves absorbs sunlight for photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide is a gas which is present in atmosphere. Plants absorb carbon dioxide by leaves through tiny openings called stomata. Oxygen produced during photosynthesis is released out in the atmosphere. Plants produce glucose during photosynthesis. Glucose is a form of energy for plants. Plants use this glucose for their growth and development. Extra glucose is stored in the form of starch. Byproduct like oxygen is released in the atmosphere, is used by other living organisms. Functions of a leaf Leaf helps to produce food as leaf is a site for photosynthesis and hence a leaf is known as kitchen of a plant. Leaf helps to exchange gases as stomata are present in leaves. Food storage. A leaf store extra food produced during photosynthesis in the form of Starch. Transpiration. Loss of water through leaves is known as transpiration. Extra water which gets absorbed by plant is released into the atmosphere through leaves. Last topic of the chapter. Interdependence of plants and animals. First, food. Let us see a food chain. Now, what is a food chain? Food chain is a sequence which tells who eats whom. Let us see an example. Rabbit is a herbivore because
rabbit eats only plant and plant products. A rabbit is eaten by lion because lion is carnivore and carnivores eat the flesh of other animals. If any animal dies, the body is eaten by scavengers, for example, vulture. Dead remains are further eaten and broken by decomposers. Example are bacteria, fungi and other microorganisms. This food chain shows animals depend on plants for food directly or indirectly. Plants depend on animals for pollination. First of all, what is pollination? Transfer of pollens from one flower to another is known as pollination and the animals who transfer the pollens are known as pollinators. Pollination helps in the growth of new plant. Seed dispersal. Animals eat fruit. Sometimes the seed of the fruit gets stuck in the fur or other body parts. So when they move from one place to distant place, the seeds also get dispersed. Seed dispersal also helps in the growth of new plant. Thank you for watching this video. See you in my next class.